Hello, I'm Catherine Gertz, and I'm the Registrar of Arc Artium, the art collection of Himmel, the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library in Collegeville, Minnesota. Like many of these days, I'm working from home, so I'm not actually in Collegeville. I'm coming to you from my apartment in St. Paul, Minnesota, to bring you part two of the first installment of my Himmel at Home series, How to Read a Print. What's going on? Part two. In the first installment, I talked about the stock imagery and codified visual vocabularies of works like Bunai Picard's Allegory of Hercules and the Vices. But this kind of high-minded world of allegory is not the only system of meaning that creates a narrative within a print. What I'm going to read for you now is William Hogarth's famous uh, 1762 satirical engraving from the Himmel Collection, Credulity, Superstition, and Fanaticism. The basic narrative is pretty easy to parse using a knowledge of Western visual vocabulary. We're in a worship space of some kinds. There's a clergyman who is waving puppets of the devil and witchcraft in front of the congregation, trying to scare them, presumably with stories of hell and brimstone. The atmosphere of the print is pretty unpleasant, so the people are pressed too close together and are shown as kind of repulsive figures in overwrought emotional states. But going deeper into the print reveals an absolute wealth of 18th century artistic, religious, cultural, and social references relating mostly to, naturally, the titular themes of credulity, superstition, and fanaticism. I'm not going to go through them all because there are a lot of references in this print. First, there are two references to famous hoaxes. This is Mary Toff who in the early 18th century convinced quite a lot of people, including some very notable people, that she regularly gave birth to rabbits. Uh, second is right next to her. So this is the boy of Bilston, who is vomiting up the nails and other metal objects that he used to fake demonic possession in the late 17th century. There are references to several well-known English ghost stories. Uh, so these are famous enough that Hogarth's 18th century odd audience would almost certainly pick up on them. On the pulpit is carved the ghost from the story of um, the Stuart era ghost story of George Villiers, the Duke of Buckingham, whose um, name is written in the ghost book. Another ghost is that of Mrs. Veal, a famous London ghost story who was um, immortalized in a story by Daniel Defoe. And in the center of the pulpit is a classical Shakespearean reference to the ghost of Caesar appearing to Brutus. To the right is a little drummer who is a reference to the reported drummer of Tedworth Poltergeist's story. And then below him, this little scene represents a story that was still big news back in 1762, the Cock Lane Ghost. So the Cock Lane ghost supposedly appeared in a house in London's Cock Lane wearing her burial shroud. So this little top knot that she has on top of her head is how burial shrouds used to be uh, fastened. And in this house, she proclaimed that she had been poisoned by her husband, supposedly. So all these ghost references underline the idea of credulity and superstition in this engraving, as do Mary Toft and the boy Bilston. You have to be pretty credulous to believe that a woman regularly gives birth to rabbits. But the really relevant part of the title of credulity, superstition, and fanaticism is the fanaticism. The Cockling Ghost was not only a ghost story. It was a hoax that became a contemporary focus of controversy and tensions between Anglicanism and Methodism in England. So Hogarth's engraving is actually a pointed satirical com commentary on Methodism. The Cockling ghost story was championed as true by several prominent Methodists, and the idea of including it in Hogarth's print is to say that Methodists, Methodists are not only so superstitious that they believe in ghosts, they are so devoted to the idea that they will make their own ghosts. So that's why there are several references to ghosts in the image and why they are obviously not meant to be frightening figures. The figure of the Cockling ghost appears several times in the engraving. So she's below the drummer of Tedworth here. She appears in the hands of several of the worshipers as kind of a doll or perhaps a fetish figure. And very interestingly, she appears with the lovers who are in the pulpit below the clergyman, obviously paying no attention to the sermon. 
to understand what is probably going on in this part of the print, you need to know a little bit about 18th century fashion and courtship rituals. So a busk is a little uh, stiff piece of wood or ivory or uh, whalebone that goes down the front of a woman's stay, uh, an 18th century corset, just like in the print. Um, busks were often carved and decorated by men and then given to their sweethearts as gifts. So the figure of the cockling ghost is being inserted into this woman's bodice as a stand-in for a lover's presence. Theoretically, a man wouldn't put the busk in himself. Um, putting your hand down a woman's bodice is a little bit inappropriate in the 18th century. And certainly doing it in public, much less a church, would be extremely inappropriate. Even 250 years removed from the world of this print, this is a suggestive gesture. So the connotation is lascivious. This reference to unwholesome lust is another part of what Hogarth is communicating in this engraving. That Methodism is a faith that encourages unwholesome, unseemly displays of emotion. And that idea is also communicated throughout the print with the extreme states of emotion presented by the congregation. Going back to the clergyman, his wig flies off to re reveal a monk's tonsure. So even though they claim to be Protestant, the Methodists are just as superstitious as the Catholics, getting a poke in at Catholicism as well. The inclusion of the boy of Bilston is also a jab at Catholicism since his possession was championed as true by English Jesuits. There is also an element in this engraving that suggests in true Hogarth fashion that he was poking us Christianity as a whole with this engraving, not just Methodism, not just Catholicism, and not even just Anglicanism. So one of his most famous prints is a parallel to this, poking at Anglicanism and how boring their sermons are. It's called the Sleeping Congregation. So in this print, there is one sensible person, and he is not an Anglican. It's this guy. Uh, the Turk, so the Muslim, who is looking in from the outside, from the safety of outside, into the madhouse of this church. Thank you for joining me. If you'd like to see some of our prints at Himmel, uh, please go to our online catalog, vhimmel.org. If you'd like to learn more about our manuscript preservation work or about other Himmel news and projects, go to our website at himmel.org. Thank you.